Australia is blessed or cursed with really amongst the most venomous animals on the planet. We have technically the most venomous snakes, the most venomous spider, jellyfish, mammal, tick, and the most venomous octopus. These animals are all around us. And we live on an island, and probably one of the most <laughs> venomous islands in the world. We have snakes that, when we test them in the laboratory, we see a level of lethality that outstrips anywhere else in the world. We have 10 out of 10 of the most toxic land snakes on Earth, and we have about 18 out of 20 snakes with the most toxic venom on Earth, and we love that statistic. The reality is that while our snakes are very dangerous, any venom is available. Over my many decades of treating envenoming, of course I've seen many cases of major envenoming where modern treatment facilities have been vital in ensuring that that patient has survived. Come on in. Okay, there we go, oh, look at that. That's a good amount. My role with BioCSL is predominantly to extract the raw venom from snakes, to milk them and extract the venom, uh, at which point after a couple of processes get sent off to BioCSL uh, where they do the, the magic work of, of turning it into any venom. The process of developing antivenine. It took about 10 years of milking funnel herbs and doing venom research on these animals. It does feel really good to be a part of that and to know that the spiders that you milk here every week are actually going to save someone's life. Yes. Hey. At this farm, the species that are involved in anti-venom production are rabbits for funnel web spider, sheep for box jellyfish, and horses which produce anti-venoms for all the land snakes, plus sea snake, redback spider and stonefish. If we went back to the earliest days of antivenom development, it involved horses, using horses as the animal to immunise with venom to produce antibody. And that remains the dominant technique throughout the world today. Antivenines are made in a living laboratory, in this case a horse. Technology really hasn't changed over the years. The main change has been the introduction of the apheresis machine machines which are human plasma collection technology. In 1930, Australia started producing its first commercial antivenom in a strong collaboration between the Federal Health Department, the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories and the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute associated with the University of Melbourne. We had a very uh, strong interest in producing a full range of products that address the need of the Australian community. Australia has a reputation for uh, some of the, the highest quality antivenoms in the world and the greatest range. What's happening today is blood being drawn from the horse and it passes through this apheresis kit machine which separates red blood cells from plasma. Now the plasma is collected in the bags below which is used for antivenom production and the red blood cells are returned back to the horse during the process. This process takes about three hours and 10 to 12 litres is collected from each horse. Here's our equine antivenom production plant. It's about five days from go to woe in this process. We produce enough antivenom so that every hospital in Australia, if they need it, has antivenom available. We make 11 different types of antivenom here. Antivenom for black snakes, taipans, death adders, tigers and brown snakes. We also make a polyvalent antivenom, which is those five land snakes combined. The sea snake antivenom, a funnel web spider antivenom, a stonefish and a box jellyfish antivenom. The one that gets used the most is redback spider. Redback spiders are found throughout Australia because they have actually adapted to live around humans. So virtually every house will have redback spiders. Okay, now the release is still potentially dangerous. They've always still got venom, so one, two, three. Thank you, buddy. The Australian Reptile Park is, is on the front line and has been back since the 1950s of milking snakes and, and providing this service to BioCSL. I think without that relationship, we would have seen a lot more lives lost in Australia. Um, and it's been a long-standing relationship. We're lucky in Australia that BioCSL makes this product. Bites and stinks account, as you guys will see, for a lot of presentations to the emergency department. The development of antivenoms in Australia started at 
the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories in a government laboratory based in Melbourne. So CSL Limited has a long history of involvement in this area. They developed the venom detection test, they developed the first aid technique that is now standard in Australia and is being looked at in other parts of the world. They've been involved in producing guidelines for doctors on managing envenoming around Australia over the last probably 30 plus years. So in Australia, the number of snake bites that present to hospitals throughout Australia is about 600 a year. The redback spider envenomation, where people come in with quite extensive amount of pain, uh, what we call local sweating, pile erection, where the, the hairs stand on end, that's the most common presentation to emergency departments that require antivenom. The typical person thinks that a snake fang is really pretty large. You know, snakes on a plane, this is an African uh, snake, a gaboon viper, very large fangs. Uh, that's kind of a preconception that some people have. But many times, because we've got very toxic snakes in Australia that have, generally speaking, pretty short fangs, then a bite may not particularly be noticed by the patient. But well, that's a brown snake fang, a leading cause of death from snake bite. Uh, so this says that you can have a person who collapses out in the bush or even at home after a snake bite, unaware that the cause of their illness um, is a snake bite. The mortality in Australia as a result of snake bite is about two to three on average a year, and that's been over the past 10 years. In the past, we had a bit of a peak, and we do see that on occasions when you look at the history in terms of mortality as a result of snake bite. Since the funnel webs uh, anti-venom inception into the hospitals in 1981, we haven't had one single death. But people would still be better off if they knew their first aid procedure. Snake bite is an enduring challenge. It's not just a challenge for the past, even though we've got antivenoms, even though we've got intensive care units, uh, modern intensive care ambulances, Royal Flying Doctor Service. This doesn't mean you can't die of snake bite in Australia in the 21st century. It doesn't mean you can't die of snake bite in Australia in the 21st century in a capital city like Melbourne. It's happened. So there's an enduring need for education of the general Australian community. So it's only natural that we look to contemporary media to try to get that message out. The app was developed as a result of us knowing for a fact that people in the community weren't doing the appropriate first stage. So the first stage of the development was to have a hard copy. Obviously now everyone carries smartphones, so this booklet is now in the form of an app and a smartphone. Say someone that you're bushwalking with has been bitten by a snake and you're not too sure what to actually sort of do, click on snake bite, bang, first aid comes on and you know what to actually do because in a panicky situation having a reference is really, really good. To ensure a continued supply of antivenoms for the Australian market, we need a strong relationship with the government, we need reliable venom supplies, healthy donor animals, so those are the things we need to keep antivenoms readily available to Australia. We're so lucky in Australia that if you're bitten, the antivenom's free. That's a wonderful service from the government. It's a wonderful service from BioCSL that any venom is available. And without it, we could see hundreds of people die every year rather than a handful. Here at BioCSL, we feel tremendous pride in being able to be the only supplier of anti-venoms for human use in Australia.